strangers waiting up and down the boulevard their shadows searching in the night street lights people living just to find emotion hiding somewhere in the night ladies and gentlemen give it up for John We got a map. A city boy born and raised in South Detroit. So according to the map here, we're at the Joe Louis Arena. We go east on Jefferson toward the Renaissance Center. Turn right just before the Renaissance Center. Take the tunnel and South Detroit puts us in Windsor, Canada. I think they changed the name. Interpretive journey lyrics and a bongo drum can only mean my can of inspiration is empty. It's really just a coincidence, but we're going to be continuing our theme of tourism in this episode, which is be a tourist in your own backyard. It'll be about curiosity and adventure. It'll also be about education. And most of all, we're gonna find our inspiration. We're gonna chat with Joni at the Lakeshore Museum Center and right here at the Muskegon Museum of Art, we'll chat with Judith. As I mentioned in the last episode, Henry Ford, one of the most creative innovators of all time had an idea because he saw the automobile and he saw it an assembly line. This assembly line, by the way, was in Chicago, a meat packers plant in which there was dead cows, blood, guts. He was looking at that and thinking, that's how I'm gonna make cars. As you can see, inspiration can come from some of the most unexpected places. My can of inspiration is empty, so let's go find a refill. First up, let's meet with Joni from the Lakeshore Museum Center. We'll be sitting in the Hackley home, part of the Hackley Hume Historic Homes. Be a tourist in your own backyard. Tell me about it. Well, um, the museums in Muskegon County have been meeting on a bi-monthly basis, and kind of one of the brainstorm ideas they came up with was let's get people to you know come and find out about all the museums in Muskegon County. So on Saturday, May 21st and Saturday, May 28th, 13 of the Muskegon County museums will offer free admission on one of those two days. So it's an opportunity for people who haven't been to the various museums to get out and do so. It's just really an opportunity for the people in our community to get to know our community better. Now these are two separate events, two separate days, different Correct. participants on each day? Yeah. Yes, because there are 13 museums to put them all on one day, that's not going to work. I mean, people are not going to be able to go 13 different places because the museums are located in downtown Muskegon. We're in our Hackley Hume historic site, so that's one of the locations. There's the um, submarine and the clipper, you know, out by the lake, and then we have a park in Whitehall, and then there's the Monarchy Museum and the White River Lighthouse, so there are museums all over the county, so to try and do those all in one day just really isn't feasible, so, you know, each museum selected one of those two Saturdays, and that's, you know, the day they'll be open and offer free admission. Next up, let's meet with Judith from the Muskegon Museum of Art. Be a tourist in your own backyard this month in May was is one of our first collaborations along with a brochure that lists all the museums. Uh, so we're doing this. All the museums will have a free day either May 21st or May 28th. Uh, and that had to do with when the different places open on their own. Ours is May 21st. It's a free day for uh, people to come in and discover what's in their own backyard and, and what's here all the time. Now, when we think of cultural attractions such as museums, mm -hmm. uh, we think of them for the tourist that's out of town. Right. So how right. do we balance that in terms of keeping things local for the community? I think our regional show is one way to do that, and that's why we not only do the regional every year, we also do other exhibitions that are um, that are meant to showcase our local artists as well as the classic artists or the you know the the American and European artists. We have a fine permanent collection of work that goes from the um, as early as the 1500s to today, American and European. But we also do a tremendous amount. In fact, this museum, I think, 
uh, probably does more as an art museum with its local artist community than most. We really see the connection between the artist in town and the, the great art of that you normally find in museums. It's connected. By drawing inspiration out of unexpected, unlikely, surprising spaces, being a tourist in your own backyard, let's draw some inspiration there. Not just photographers, not just artists, not just for those who create or even for those who want to create. This applies to everyone. I don't know, it's been my experience that inspiration always tends to come from the least likely spaces and places anyway. If I force it, I don't do as well. So perhaps you're a graphic designer. Maybe put down the pen, print out every Beatles album cover, forget about graphic design, and just dwell on the album covers. Yes, I'm really saying this. Let's take a choreographer, for instance. Needs some inspiration, needs to think outside of the box a little bit. Now, forgive me here. We're looking for storytelling inspiration. If you are a choreographer, check YouTube for mimes. I know we all hate mimes, but don't think choreography. Watch for the storytelling. Let's say you're an author. Here's an unexpected place for you. A small antique store. Talk to the owner or the proprietor there and look at some objects. See if there's some sort of a backstory behind them. I'm Johnny Lunchbox and I'm so creative I once walked by an art museum. I think outside the box because I'm Johnny Lunchbox. I'm creative. Feel free to share. Hi, I'm Johnny Lunchbox and uh, oh, it's cold down here at the beach but I know how much you people like to look at my sunset pictures so I'm here. Feel free to share. As photographers, we've got the biggest responsibility of them all. If we're claiming to be artists, we need to continue to stay inspired, to be inspiring. If we're not, we are merely duplicators. You know, duplicators, like a photocopy machine. You take apart a Canon photocopy machine, you're going to find a Canon camera. Because you carry a camera, it doesn't make you an artist. It might just make you a duplicator, a photocopy machine, if you're not inspired properly. You mentioned quilts, we think. Uh, something that's not that modern necessarily but you say modern quilts oh my we, goodness i mean when we watch the movies you know we see art museums we see a bunch of guys running around dressed like the monopoly man saying things like impressionism and, and uh how are you how do you keep up with the times well i think we pay attention to what is on the contemporary art scene and is it all good no it's not you know, we were talking earlier, you and I, about you know everybody's a photographer, but it's not all good. Um, I think what distinguishes um, artists, you know, really good artists, uh, from maybe the people that are doing it for a hobby or just trying, is that the really good artists have a language, they have a skill that they can turn into, whether it's painting or photography or uh, working with fiber. They have they have a fine fine skill to do that. But they also have something to say, and to me that always makes a difference. To me that's a real artist, is that when you look at that work, it talks back to you, it speaks to you. And, and to me that's what marks a quality work of art. Um, so yes, we do have a quilt show uh, later in the summer, and I'm going to tell you it's going to knock people's eyes out. It's phenomenal. We're going to be surprised. They're going to be very surprised. It's not my grandma's quilt. It, oh, not in the least. Okay. So. Storytelling. Uh, what is there uh, storytelling here like uh... I think there is because I think it's what I was just saying in that artists that are really good have something to say we don't always know necessarily what they're trying to say but I think there's a story in every single piece of art if you happen to be in Muskegon County and you're seeing this in a timely manner definitely check all of these out two separate days it's not one or the other it's both it's May 21 May 28 I mentioned three reasons, adventure and curiosity, plus education, and most of all, inspiration. Call it a cheap date weekend. Just come on out. I'll click to a link. I'll click, I'll link it. Okay. And if you're seeing this after May 28th, well, as any true Lions fan would say, there's always next year. I mean, seriously, you come to a beautiful spot like this, you cannot help 
but be inspired. Relax, unwind, recharge, but thinking outside the box, go to the unexpected. Go where the stories are. You're a storyteller. Be a storyteller. Yes, that's how that's done. I'm John with Picture Michigan. Keep pulling that trigger. of the Muskegon Museum of Art. We are sitting in the middle of little blah, 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 from the Museum Muskegon of Art, from the Muskegon Museum of Art. That the museum, holy shit, from the museum, from the shit, from the, from the. <laughs> Next up, let's meet with Judith from the museum. <laughs> holy I mean, they're all, trapped in a box so we're not really thinking outside the box but still you, you never know